Hello and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at this language, which is the set of all perfect squares. And by that I mean, is all the strings of length a perfect square? So we could have, well, we could have zero zeros, so we can have the empty string, we can have a single zero, we can have four zeros, we can have nine zeros, etc. And what we want to do is we want to show that L is not regular. So the main technique to showing a language is not regular is to use the pumping lemma. So let's prove using the pumping lemma that this language is not regular. So let's suppose it is regular. So suppose L is regular. So this is always a set of steps you should always do every single time you try to prove something using the pumping lemma. You suppose that it is uh, regular, that language, and then because L is regular, you appeal to the pumping lemma, which says that there exists a pumping constant, which we always call P for this language. It's just some number. There just exists some number and if you recall the proof of the pumping lemma, that will refer to the number of states in the associated DFA for this language. Although we won't be thinking of a DFA, it just refers to that. So what do we want to do? Well, if you recall the proof of the pumping lemma, you need to pick a string that is in the language and has length at least P. So we have to choose some w some string in the language with length at least p some some string of length at least p in the language well not necessarily everyone's going to work but very often it does so let's just choose zero to the p squared well p is an integer so p squared is a perfect square so this string is inside l which is good and p squared is larger than p because it's just p times p. So therefore this string uh, satisfies the two requirements. And then now we need to look at all decompositions of the string. So look at all decompositions of that string w we just picked into three parts. So because we're talking about the um, regular, whether this language is regular or not. So we need three parts such that the middle piece has length at least one and the first two pieces have length at most p. So what, is, what are all those? Well, since the entire string in this case is all zeros, it's just p squared zeros, well, we note then that the x part, the y part, and the z part are all zeros because the entire string is zeros. So we don't know necessarily the exact number of zeros that are in the X part, the Y part, and the Z part, but let's just give them names. So for a particular decomposition, let's just say that X has alpha zeros in it. Well, X can be the empty string itself. So all we know is that alpha is at least zero. And we know Let's just say that y is 0 to the beta, so the number of zeros in y I'm giving the name beta. And because y has length at least 1, we know that beta itself is at least 1, because beta is just the length of y. And then z, well, since the entire string x, y, z makes up the string w, then we know that z is the rest of the string. Well, we started off with p squared zeros. We took away alpha here. We took away beta here. So we are left with p squared minus alpha minus beta zeros. And another thing we should note is that uh, alpha plus beta is at most p because that's just restating what this condition is. The length of x plus the length of y is at most p because that's just what that says although we won't actually use that. So what is the fifth step is, well, we need to choose a, uh, an i, a value i, some integer i at least zero, such that 
x, y to the i, z is crucially not in the language. Because the pumping lemma says no matter which i you pick, you will always stay in the language. But if we find a value of i such that we leave the language, that gives us a contradiction. So what value of i should we pick? Well, we should not pick 1, because if we picked 1, that's just the original string, w, and we picked w originally to be in the language l. But we want to get a string that's not in l, so we better pick something other than 1. So let's choose i equal to 2, and you'll see why we picked 2 in a second. So what is x, y squared z? So squared just literally means 2 in the exponent. Well, this is just x, y, y, z, so just two copies of y. That's literally what it means. And if we just copy down our decomposition, well, the x part has alpha zeros. The two y's together have two beta zeros. And then the z part has p squared minus alpha minus beta zeros. And then if we let the dust settle, well, we have alpha zeros here, and then we take away alpha here, so the alphas cancel. And then we have a 2 beta here and a minus beta here. So therefore, we have p squared plus beta zeros left. So then what we want to know, or what we want to prove, is that so we want to show whether or not p squared plus beta is a perfect square. Because if we can conclusively prove that it can't be a perfect square, then that tells us that it can, uh, its length cannot be the length of any string in the original language, which is the language of perfect squares. So that would imply that x, y squared, z is not an L. So, it is, actually it's not, that's what I meant. <laughs> so, how do I show that it's not a perfect square? Well, we note that beta is at least 1. So that implies that p squared plus beta is strictly more than p squared. So, that tells us, because it's a strict inequality right here, that it can't be equal to p squared. So this implies that p squared plus beta is not p squared. But it could very well be, so it could be that p squared plus beta is a different perfect square. Right, because it's, if, it's not if it's not equal to this one, it could be equal to a different one. Well, what's the next perfect square in the line? Well, that's p plus 1 whole thing squared. And if you expand that out via foiling, just like in grade school math, what you would get is p squared plus 2p plus 1. So this is the next uh, perfect square. So, well then, what can we tell? Well, uh, how does p squared plus beta, let's recall that that's the length of the string we got, compare to p squared plus p, uh, 2p plus 1, which is the uh, next perfect square. Well, let's see. Well, we know that beta itself is at least, is at most p, sorry, is at most p. Well, why do we know that? Because alpha plus beta from before is at most p. So I said that we weren't actually going to use this fact, but we're going to use this fact here. And we can say this because we know that alpha is at least zero, but it could be equal to zero. But it can't be negative. So that implies that beta is at most p. It could be less, but it's at most p for sure. So this implies that p squared plus beta, the length of the string that we got, is at most p squared plus p. But now, look at these two. So let's look at this one and this one. What do we notice about them? Well, one of them 
has a plus one in there, and the other one doesn't. And the other terms, well, they have, both have a p squared, so those cancel. One has a p, the other one has a 2p, and we don't have a plus one here, and this one does have a plus one. So this is strictly less than p squared plus 2p plus 1. So what have we found? Well, we found that p squared, the, origin, the first inequality we found, is strictly less than p squared plus beta. And this thing we just found out is strictly less than p squared plus 2p plus 1. Well, that implies that the length of the string we derived is between two consecutive perfect squares, but not equal to either. So p squared plus beta is strictly between two perfect squares. And since, uh, not just two perfect squares, two consecutive, which is the crucial part. If, we, if I just picked some other perfect square and showed that it was in between, that doesn't really tell us anything. But because it's between two consecutive perfect squares and it's not equal to either one of them, it cannot possibly be a perfect square because that would imply that they weren't consecutive, but they are. So this implies that p squared plus beta is not a perfect square which implies that the strings, the string itself that we got, which has length p squared plus beta, is not in the language L, which implies that L is not regular. Because if it were regular, then this derived string would be in the language L, but it's not in the language L, so therefore the language itself is not regular. So I hope that was interesting. Let me know if you were able to find that a different way. As always, please like the video. It would help with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. And as always, I will see you next time.